you know those really sad, depressing commercials of the animals that are being abused, neglected, or just stranded there? Well, you see people trying to help them and advertising it on TV, but you never really see people trying to help out animals that are being tested, used for like, to see, um, to be tested on like for the cosmetic products. My purpose today is to convince you that, um, convince you that animal testing should be illegal. Um, I will be talking about what, what is animal testing, what alternatives can be used, and what kind of tests they do on them. Animal testing is used, is used for animals in experiments and development projects, usually determine toxicity, dosing, dosing, and efficiency of test drugs before proceeding into human um, trials. Animal testing often means that animals are not treated human, humanly, which means that they're usually locked up in cages, like really small containers depending on the size they are, and usually are not fed well. Um, according to Santa Clara, Santa Clara University, eight million animals are exposed to painful treatments, and usually 10% of those animals are never like sedated or given any painkillers. And according to something.org, over one million, a million dogs, cats, primates, sheep, hamsters, and guinea pigs are used in labs each year. And of those, 86,000 are usually dogs and cats. 50% of the animals are used for cosmetic um, experimenting and usually die within the three weeks if the experiment fails. Which brings me to the next, my next point. What kinds of tests do they run on the animals? Um, well, the drain test, an eye or skin irritancy test that involves putting a substance in the eye of, of or in the eye or in the skin of an immobilized rabbit, and then observing the results. Rabbits are used for these tests for the low amount of tears they produce. So usually, when they put eye drops in their eyes, the rabbits won't be able to like wash out the liquids that they put in. So that's why they use them. This test is controversial, controversial because it is usually it is usually used for testing cosmetics and household household products, and because of the difference between rabbits' eyes and humans, like I said, okay, the skin the Dre's test is used for determining the level skin of irritancy to aim. The aim is to deduce the level of skin irritancy on human skin <coughs> caused by cosmetic products. Animals usually used are rabbits and guinea pigs. The method is a patch of the animal's um, skin is usually like shaved off. It's usually on the side, and they put like like whatever substance they want to test on the guinea, guinea pigs or rabbit skin. The animal then is locked up in another cage and it is unable to move for seven to 14 days while the test is being, while they, they are observing the animal. Later, if, um, later if examined, if there's any edema, which is the fluid and buildup of the tissues, or erythema, redness of the skin, um, that would be considered a failed, um, a failed uh, animal, which is a failed test, so they would just get rid of the animal and just continue on. But if the animal is successful, usually they just wash them, clean them, and put them back into their cage and continue using the same animal for the same testing or for other testing. The effect usually includes extreme inflammation of the skin and bleeding. Common products are the shampoos and body lotions. And now for the dry test for the eyes, the aim is to ascertain the degree of irritancy when the cosmetic product is applied on the um, human's eye, I mean on the human's. The test usually includes getting drops in the, uh, usually a rabbit's eyes, and then locking also the rabbit up in a little cage for seven to 14 days. The rabbits are then kept under observation, and if there's any red, redness or swelling, or any sort of discharge in the eyes, they're usually like just put them down and going on to the next trials. But if they are successful, they are also cleaned and reused for the same trial. 
like I mentioned earlier, usually the rabbits are not very like okay to use because they're, they don't have the same eyes as a human eye because of the way they don't produce um, tears like we do. So sometimes the test could be just false and not work. There are alternates for using um, animals. For example, um, nearly 50 different alternative methods testing strategies have been developed and validated and or accepted by the international regulatory authorities. These are a few examples. <coughs> Using blood from the human volunteers, usually they just get the blood samples and, and then just look for any signs that like what would cause a fever in the blood or something. Um, and this usually saves up to hundreds of thousands of rabbits each year. And then there's another one when they can, uh, make artificial skin grafts, which uh, um, involves anim which involves less animals getting injured, having to live through pain, and sometimes <coughs> being left to suffer or die. This is a reason some people believe that animal testing is unnecessary, poor, scientific, and never, it never works because you never, you can never compare an animal to a human. You know, like the animal will be under stress and it can just give you false um, results at, towards the end. So I believe that animal testing should be illegal. Shana, you were going to share your thoughts on this. Um, I thought this speech was good. It started out good, too. Um, as it went on, she was like reading off of her cards, but then kind of balancing out with speaking to us. And she kind of had the same thing that Stephanie did. She, When she looked at the cards, it looked like she was struggling, but then when she like looked at us and didn't focus so much on the cards, it, would, like, it went smoother. Um, I think her voice could be a little louder, and then you, she went like a little fast explaining some information. Um, so that was the only part that I thought um, had some trouble, but it was good overall. And then the ending was kind of like just like cut short. Um, that was it. Okay. Well, I appreciate your comments about the ending of the speech because I think there is, in fact, uh, it does feel like it's abrupt. It suddenly uh, stops and we don't really get uh, much sense of closure. There's not really a summary of what's being talked about. I like the opening. I think the reference to the uh, commercial was fine to get our attention and introduce the subject. It was a little bit problematic to be able to um, uh, figure out exactly what the claim is, well I shouldn't say that the claim, the claim was very clear, but the um, structure, the preview was a little bit confusing because it sounded like things were actually going to be presented in an order that was awkward. It sounded like the last thing you were going to talk about should have been the first thing that you talked about. If you don't want us to uh, support the tests, I think you want to describe what those tests are first and it feels a little bit like you're doing it backwards in this material. Uh, in the body of the speech, it feels frequently like we're going through the same material uh, a couple of times, and I think that's because of the way you've tried to organize it between um, different types of tests, uh, but it feels like we're covering the same material repeatedly, and I think that you need to find a better way to cover that material and not be repeating yourself, because you kind of repeated the whole process twice on each of those points and that was um, you know it, it's not particularly interesting we've heard it once and why we're hearing it again I'm not quite sure that was a little weird All right. um, I didn't you know I, I heard one reference to uh, the international regulatory group that talked about what the number of tests are that are available but I didn't hear much else in the way of uh, citation of information that's being used to support your points. 
Uh, the descriptions <coughs> sometimes feel a little incomplete. I think you do try to make them seem dramatic. Uh, I think there's a chance to get some emotional appeals in here. You start off with talking about all the animals that are being used, but mostly, uh, m probably 80% of the speech seems to be talking about rabbits, and uh, you need to give us a stronger connection with the bunnies if you don't want us to support these tests. Yeah, you know, you know tell us why, the, how the how the rabbits suffer and what's so bad about it. Y you seem to feel like there's something wrong with taking a rabbit that went through one of the successful tests and putting it back into the pool for another testing process. There's, there seems to be an implication that there's something about that that's not right, but I don't know why it's not right, whether it's a moral issue. Hey, he got through once, he shouldn't have to go through this again. You know, one shot at the Hunger Games or something. Uh, or, or whether it's because you think that the results are going to be tainted because they've already been subjected to something and you might get inaccurate results as a consequence. I, I really couldn't tell what the objection was there and I think that needed to be clear. On the presentation, I, I think that you, you're bouncing on being able to talk to the audience directly, but because you do so much reading and you just fall into the habit of looking down, uh, you're not really connecting with the audience much and that undermines the credibility of the speech to some degree. All right, thank you.